it can be really tempting when you see a camera deal or some kind of electronics deal where the price is significantly discounted. It can be very tempting to click the buy now button, but I would urge you to, to maybe step back a little bit before you want to just throw yourself at the best deal possible. Think for a second if you actually want to go through the hassle of buying these refurbished, gray market, whatever they are, discounted items. I've had a few horror stories myself, and and while I've never been screwed out of my money, it's still, the hassle usually in the end hasn't been worth it. I've had a few times, it's probably like a 50-50% uh, where like, you know, 50% of the time it goes well, I get the product, it works out, I got a good deal, and it does exactly when I need it to do, and I don't have any problems with it. The other 50% of the time, it doesn't work right, it's missing items, it breaks quickly, and it can just be a hassle having to deal with all that, especially when you bought it from either or just a person or some kind of uh, third-party uh, reseller who you're not very familiar with. It can be kind of a hassle. For, for example, I wanted to buy an Xbox One because that just seemed like, hey, I, you know, I like video games, I want to get a new console, let's get an Xbox One. And in my mind, I had the, the conversation with myself, do I want to get the cheaper refurbished one or do I want to pay full price for a new one? And unfortunately, I decided to go with the cheaper one because I was like, you know, I'll save a little bit, save 100 bucks or so. I'll get the refurbished one. I'm sure it will be the exact same. Well, it turns out it wasn't. The, the, the Xbox One showed up at my door. I took it out, got it all set up on my TV, went through the whole setup. And now all these modern video game systems, they're, you know, you got to put in all your information, where you live, your time zone, you got to log into your account, you're typing stuff in on a controller. It takes time. It's not a simple process. Get it all set up, turn it on. It's working great. Clicking around the menu. Everything's looking awesome. I take out a game disc, put it in the tray, and it makes the worst noise I've ever heard. <laughs> On the in the disc tray, and I am just like, oh no, what did I do? I spend probably an hour or two doing everything I can, looking up YouTube videos, how to fix this, you know, any workarounds, what do I do? And at the end of the day, there was nothing I could do. I reset the system, everything, right? Still horrible noise from the disc disc drive, and just couldn't play any game. It wouldn't it wouldn't read any games. Tried a bunch. So what I have to do, contact a seller, set up a return, they refund the money, I ship it back, go through this whole hassle, and what I do in the end, I ended up buying a new one from Amazon just because I didn't want to have to deal with all that again. And this was a situation where the listing, they said everything worked great, it even came with some games, so it was like, oh sweet, I'll get some games for free, like it's, it's the perfect deal. And it ended up being a total waste of time. Same thing can happen with cameras, with TVs, computers. Unless you're getting something refurbished from the manufacturer itself, like an Apple refurbished computer or Nikon refurbished camera, Canon, Panasonic, whatever, I would just really uh, urge you to stay away from anything used or refurbished, especially when it comes to electronics. These things are notorious for breaking, even when they're new. And that's the most frustrating part is like you could buy a new one and it could break too. So it oftentimes isn't worth saving 50 or $100 just to get the cheaper one because you very well could have problems and you'd be <laughs> slapping yourself on the head saying you should have had a V8 because you watched this video and you didn't take my advice. So it's not like I want these companies to make a bunch of money off of you. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just trying to save you from the hassle of going through this stuff like I've done. And you know what? It's probably going to happen again. In six months, I'm going to be sitting there on the internet just searching around for something that I want. And I'll go buy it and be like, oh, you know, I'll get the cheap one, the refurb one, because I don't want to listen to myself. This one is actually a good deal. And I'll get it and it'll break or it'll suck. Or I, and maybe I won't be able to return that one. Or maybe, you know, <laughs> the seller just totally uh, abandoned ship and disappears. You never know. And more often than not, unless unless it's a significant deal and you really want to take the risk and you really need to save the money, I would highly advise against it. Other things like uh, tripods or lenses, other items that are more mechanical in nature and don't have the 
fragi- <laughs> the fragility of some of the electrical com- electronic components, those you might be a little bit safer with getting something. Uh, tripods especially are really... Uh, I have a tripod that I've had now since 2004, so a little over 10 years. And the thing holds up really well, you know, it's, but that's because at the time I got something that was a higher end tripod. So sometimes it's worth that investment. Uh, If you know anything about me or the other videos I've made on this channel, you probably know that I'm, I'm looking for deals. I don't want to spend a bunch of money on one thing because with video production and filmmaking, you need an arsenal of tools. You need everything, audio, video, lights, uh, support, the whole deal. You have to pay for actors and locations and makeup artists and all that stuff, and it all costs money. So if you can divide your money up across those things and get the best deal on all of them, that's always preferable. But there are a few things, the things that are going to last, the things that are going to stick around, and you're not going to have to keep upgrading every year. Invest the money, get those things, get the nice, the nicer stuff. You don't have to get the super high end, but get the nicer stuff. But then anything that's like electronic or software based, where you know in a year or two they're going to make, they're going to come out with something that's like twice as good. It's usually better to stay on the uh, cheaper side of those things, you know. So your GH4s, your A7Ss, even you know your DSLRs, like your 5D Mark Threes and, and that kind of stuff. The stuff that's reasonable for an average individual to purchase buy that stuff. I would highly uh, discourage anyone investing in, you know, a $50,000 camera setup unless they know for a fact they're going to make that money back or they have a very specific reason for getting that camera because guaranteed in a year or two, they're going to come out with something better or there's going to be something cheaper that's just as good and you're out all that money if you didn't make it back. So all that to say, you might want to steer clear of the refurbished secondhand, used, gray market, whatever it is, electronics, because in the end, it might not be as good of a deal as it first seems.